After you learn to paint or draw portraits, the next step is to learn how to paint the figure. And when you start figure painting, you'll run into what I'd argue to be one of the most challenging things to paint, and that's the human hand. Painting hands are no more difficult than painting anything else. The thing that makes them challenging is that they're incredibly unforgiving. The small misplacements of shadows and highlights completely change the form, and we as human beings are very, very good at noticing these mistakes. All of us have an acute ability to notice painting inaccuracies when it comes to portraits, figure paintings, or basically any part of the human form, like hands. So I've recently finished the painting that you see on the screen right now. It's a multi-figure painting with a very dramatic single light source over to the right, and it's also a scene in the rain, and water tends to distort and abstract the things we see. So in this week's video, I'll show you how to paint this hand, and also how this type of lighting can actually help make things a bit easier. So if you're going to be painting along with me, maybe painting this one as a practice piece or a study, I've included my completed painting on the left side of the screen, and then also on the right is the photo reference that I used to paint from. This way you could see the difference between the two, what I changed, and of course the mistakes that I made. Remember that mistakes in painting are unavoidable, they're just part of the process. And the trick is to try to hide or minimize them the best you can so that viewers don't notice them or pay attention to them. And up on the members page, we'll be completing this entire painting. We finished the woman on the left last week, and next week we're going to start painting this woman in the center. But today we're just going to be focusing on one part, and that's the hand in this dramatic lighting. And I'm going to walk you through all the steps that I used to paint it. I painted in the side profile of the portrait of the woman just behind this hand. And you can see here, I just left a blank area of canvas, and that's what I want for this. I'm going to be working on white, gessoed canvas, and of course, we're going to be erasing into the paint for highlights. Just like all my other painting tutorials, I'm only using transparent colors for this. Now, the first thing I need to do here is to mask off the face that I just painted. So I placed on a piece of frisket film right over the painting, and I cut out along my initial line drawing. I'm also adding some blue painter's tape along the outside of it. This way, it just helps prevent any overspray. My approach to painting has always been about taking it slow and just working on one part of the painting at a time. In larger paintings like this one, where there's a lot of things going on, it's so, so easy to get overwhelmed and then start rushing. So what I'm doing here is starting out by painting in one finger. This is the pinky. And the area that I'm focusing on right now is the shadows. The reason for that is just because they're the darkest areas on this finger. And if I get them in, it's just going to kind of give me a reference point so I could see other values. And I know I say this all the time, but when you're working on a pure white surface like gessoed canvas, it's just kind of hard to see values accurately because that white is just such a high contrast compared to everything else. So what I'm doing here is just adding in those shadows, some of the darker areas, to help cover some of it up so I could see the surrounding values a bit easier. I'm using the transparent flesh tone that we mixed in the first part of this video, which was uploaded a few weeks ago. And you'll see here, I'm just using shields to get in the shadows between each finger. I'm lining up this shield with the right edge of the ring finger, and then I'm just spraying to the right. This will give me a sharp line and a starting point to start painting in the rest of it. And after I use my shield to get a few of these contour lines in, I just spray it in freehand. At this point, I feel pretty comfortable with that finger. I feel like I got the shadows in the right spot. So I'm going to start working on the next finger. This is the ring finger. And when I'm lining up the shield, I'm lining it up with the edge of the middle finger. And then again, spraying to the right where the shadow is. You'll always get a bit of overspray when using a shield. So I'm coming in with an eraser here, cleaning up some of these edges. So now that the two fingers are in place, I'm going to have to start darkening them up. I'm still using the same flesh tone, and I'm just using my shield again around the edges. And that frisket that I placed on in the beginning is just protecting the whole back of the painting, the area that I finished before, so I don't have to worry about that. So the reason that I decided to show this hand in a painting tutorial is just because of this dramatic lighting. If you look at the photo reference on the left side of the screen, you'll see that these highlights, the bright areas, are extreme values. They're almost pure white. And usually one of the difficult parts about painting hands is that everything is so subtle. There's very subtle smooths and transitions between the joints and in between the highlights and shadows. But in this one, since it's in the rain and we have that dramatic lighting, these highlights really stand out and it makes them so much easier to see and then to paint in. So at this point, I have those major or macro values in. We have the shadows in place and the area where the highlights are going to be. 
but it just kind of looks cartoony. It almost looks like it's made out of Play-Doh. And the reason for that is just because it's too smooth. So what I'm going to do here is come in with my eraser and start erasing out the highlights in this light area on the right side of each finger. The highlights on the little finger or pinky finger are a bit more subtle compared to the two next to it. So I just erased out a small amount of paint here. And as we move along to the ring finger, I want you to look at that photo reference. You could just see in that one how much brighter some of these highlights are. And in order to render this in a painting, all we need to do is pull out more paint. The more paint we remove, the brighter the highlight is going to be. Since this paint is transparent, I could still see some of my line drawings underneath. So I'm starting here where I sketched out that brightest highlight, just erasing out a good amount of paint and then working my way down the right side of the finger. When I erase out skin texture, I usually like to erase in small circular motions. This looks natural to me. When you let them overlap, it, it's a good way to just kind of pull out a large mass of highlight. But here on the top of the finger where we have this thin highlight, I can't do that. So you can see here, I'm just erasing in horizontal strokes. Again, trying to get these to overlap so it looks like one even value of highlight rather than a bunch of scratch marks. Then I'll work my way down the finger using those small circular strokes and also a few hatching motions just to get some different textures in there. I'm gonna go back to my airbrush and just glaze a thin layer of this flesh tone over the top to knock down some of those values. Now below the fingers where the joints are, you'll see some subtle shadows over to the left of each one. They're pretty soft, so I'm just gonna paint these in freehand. Again, I'm following my line drawing underneath. That's always my guide. And with that pencil drawing underneath, what happens is as you add some more paint on, and then blend it using the eraser, you know, for some highlights and some textures. Most of that pencil graphite underneath just kind of gets erased out and you really don't see it in the final painting. If some of those pencil lines show through, it doesn't bother me. I kind of like that look. You could see the process of how it was painted. But if you don't like that, what I recommend doing is after you do your pencil drawing, use a kneaded eraser and just go around all your lines and really lighten them up. And then when you add the paint on top of those soft lines, they just completely disappear. Going back to the index finger, the first thing I want to do here is start darkening up some of these shadows. This way, it's just going to help form and shape the finger a bit better. So anatomy-wise, the bones inside the fingers are called the phalanges, and just below them on the base of the hand are the metacarpal bones. And just so you know, inside the hand, there's four metacarpal bones. Each one is connected to each one of the fingers or the phalanges. So each finger consists of three bones plus a fourth one, which is inside the palm of the hand. Do you need to know this in order to paint the hand? Of course not. The reason that I'm telling you is that in between each one of these bones, we have some joints. And around each joint or knuckle, you'll have areas of the finger which slightly protrude, so you get a bunch of small highlights and shadows. It's one of the reasons that painting hands are so difficult, especially for new painters, just because there's so many transitions and so many subtle changes in value. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm paying attention to all those small shadows around the joints here where the hands connect to the fingers. If you look at the reference, you'll just see there's a bunch of little areas of dark and light. And then after some more erasing with the stick eraser on those highlights, what I decided to do here was switch over to an electric eraser and just tap out a few very bright specular highlights on top of that initial highlight. I'll start with this one just under the knuckle on the ring finger. And you can see here, I'm just kind of tapping it around in the brightest areas. And then I'll just follow that same technique right down this finger using the electric eraser to pull out those very bright specular highlights. On the middle finger, I decided to use a piece of frisket. I just cut out a small part of it, and then I'm spraying above it and removing it as soon as I get that in. And then I'll come around with the freehand shield and just clean up any of the edges. Once those lines are in, then I go right back over to the airbrush freehand, paint in the shadows where I see them in the reference, and then use the eraser just to pull out the bright highlights. Now, as I move down to the hand itself, I wanna start painting in these lines that start at the wrist and move right up to the fingers. Since the shadows here aren't perfectly straight, I'm using a ripped piece of paper rather than a shield, just spraying along the edge of it. That way, that texture transfers over to the canvas. I'll spray in some paint freehand, and then I'll switch over to the eraser. And again, I'm using this to erase out the highlight to the right of each one of these shadows. Normally, I like to erase out in small circular motions, but just like before, 
This is kind of a sharp line, so I'm just erasing out in vertical strokes. And these lines going up the hand are not bones, they are tendons called the extensor tendons. But these tendons do sit on top of the bones and they run right up from the wrist to the digits or the fingers. And in most cases, when you're painting the hand, these are pretty subtle. They don't really stand out this much. The reason that they're really popping out in this one is because of that dramatic lighting. Her hand is raised up and the pointer finger is kind of stretched out and it's just kind of making these stand out a lot more than you would normally see them. So I'm just working my way around the hand here using both my airbrush and my erasers. Airbrush for some of those very small, subtle, dark shadows that we talked about before. And then of course for the highlights, the eraser for the softer ones and then the electric eraser for those bright specular ones. And I'm not gonna narrate every single thing I'm doing here. I think you can get the idea just by looking at this. But the most important thing is that I'm paying attention to the reference and just trying to notice darks and lights. I am exaggerating a lot of these lights right now. They're too bright. It almost looks like a skeleton hand at this point, but that's okay because if any area on an airbrush painting is too bright, it's never a problem because it only takes a few seconds to go back over to the airbrush and then just glaze some paint on top. I'll come back to that later, but I'm adding some texture here for where some of the water is just dripping down the side of the hand. And just like everything else in this one, the airbrush to paint in the shadow, the eraser for the highlight. I know that a very common mistake that I used to make when I started out in drawing was that I used to draw the fingers almost too straight. And I think this is very common among new painters or drawers. If you look at the fingers on the left side of the screen, try to pay attention to the edges of each one. Now it's very subtle, but you'll notice on each finger in between the joints, each one has a subtle curve to it. Sometimes it kind of concaves in, and other times it's convex, where it slightly curves out. If you look at the ring finger, I want you to look at my painting and then look at the reference, and you'll notice a mistake that I made. On the reference, you'll see that there's a very subtle curve here where it curves out, and in mine, I just have a straight line going down. And I didn't notice this while I was painting it. I'm actually noticing it now while watching the video. And this is what I meant by the difficulty of painting hands, just because they're filled with all these subtle curves. And if I did this between every joint and every finger, the hand would look completely wrong. As I said at the start of this video, mistakes are just part of painting. I must make thousands of mistakes on every single painting, but the goal is to try to catch those mistakes. So the more you work and the more you practice, the better your eye gets at seeing them. Let's finish off this video by painting in the thumb. And the first thing I want to do is get this shadow around the fingernail in. I'm using a shield, just placing it on the edge, lightly spraying to the right, just so we have a very subtle contour or an outline of the fingernail. Then back over to the airbrush freehand, get some paint on the thumb just to cover up some of that white gesso. And then I'll use a few different shields to paint in the left side, that contour, along the left side of the thumb. You can see in the reference photo that this thumb is in a very dark cast shadow, so you really don't see much of it. So the key here is just to keep adding paint to it and constantly push it back into the background. And an airbrush just makes this so easy because you could just keep glazing layer after layer. And that's pretty much it for this one. The only thing I'm doing now is switching over to the color black and using that to spray in some of the shadows. And that black paint does such a great job at pushing that thumb toward the background, really kind of hiding it away. So that's where I'm going to wrap this one up. I know I went through a lot of information pretty quickly, but I do hope that some of you found something helpful in this one. This was definitely a bit of a strange painting with all the abstractions from that bright spotlight, and then of course from the water, from the rain. And we'll be continuing this one up on the members page, so if you want to watch more of that and help support the channel, consider becoming a member. I personally want to welcome the two newest members, Jay and Mike. Thank you guys so much and welcome. And of course, thank you so much to these generous people who are the current channel members. So that's it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope everyone's doing well, and I hope you guys are all enjoying your summer so far. I'll be back here next week, and I'll see you then.